Hi everyone, um, SAP users, end users, consultants, experts. Welcome to another training. Um, to another training for SAP S four hundred Finance Configuration Part Four. Um, please kindly visit our YouTube channel for other parts of this video. We're actually trying to share knowledge. It is your SAP consultant, um, S4 HANA, FICO consultant, Kelly Chi, Kelly Adele. I'll be taking you through, through this journey. Um, remember to like and share on all the social media platforms where you find this video, YouTube, LinkedIn, um, and make sure that um, our purpose is to actually share knowledge. So basically, for this class this afternoon, because it's afternoon from where I'm speaking from, we're going to actually be looking at a very, very important topic in doing your configuration process for the SAP S4 HANA finance system. Um, remember to go to our YouTube channel and um, like and subscribe for other parts of this video. Now, in SAP's wisdom, they have tried to structure the configuration process for FICU via an enterprise structure. We're going to see what the enterprise structure for SAP S4 HANA is, what, what, what actually are the benefits, what do you find within this structure, um, how do you do your configurations, because we are trying, we're going to try to configure some of the informations in this structure. And um, basically, how um, do you um, set up your, how do you begin your configuration uh, within the enterprise structure? So why not move with me? Let's see what this topic has for the day. Remember, my name is Kelechi Kelly Ajele. Okay, so what is an enterprise structure? Of course, within the SAPS 400 finance space. SAP defines the enterprise structure as the definition of specific organizational units that together represent your company's business units and divisions. So we have been able to talk about um, all the documentations and processes that are required for your configuration. Of course, the, the business blueprint, the business process model, and a lot more. Um, at this stage, we are actually um, at the realize phase where um, um, we are actually trying to um, um, configure the system for the client use. However, SAP in his wisdom has advised that for your configurations, you have to do that within a structure we call the enterprise structure. And the enterprise structure contains business units and divisions for which um, based on business requirements and discussions with the business, you could decide to use all of them if it's required or if it's necessary, or you can decide to use any of those ones that you think fits into what the business process is. However, for this training, we're going to explain to you what these business units and divisions are and also how you can do your configurations with them. Enterprise structures are the bedrock of the SAP S4 HANA finance um, solution. Without them, you couldn't integrate or configure your program. Of course, like I said, the finance is the core or the roots of every SAP S4 HANA finance or every SAP you know, S4 HANA configuration. Every other module, will require the finance to begin with this structure. Enterprise structure, um, of course, depending on the, the, the particular version of SAP you're using, if you're using other modules like the Arribas, the Concourse, of course, you can you know, um, implement those add-ons, but if you're using the, the S4 HANA Finance ERP with the core modules, then um, finance would have to begin with the configuration of the enterprise structure. 
The enterprise structure in SAP is an organizational diagram that shows how the whole group is mapped in SAP. Okay, now it shows um, all the structures within the um, config environment. It consists of some original units of different modules created for a specific business related reasons and are grouped together. So you have FI, CEO, SD, MM, and all that. So all these original units, and of course, inside all these um, core modules, you have their units, you have their, their divisions. So basically these, uh, these all come together to what you, you know, to what you have as a robust and digital driven and AI driven SAP S1 system. The original unit includes legal company entities, sales office, profit centers, cost centers, segments, and so on. To handle specific, to handle, so outside the core, you have those these units to handle, you know, specific business processes that are not directly tied to the GL or that we would need to do your reporting, basically for reporting purposes. So if you have, for example, a cost center, you would want to tie your transactions or tie expenses to a particular cost center. When you're running your report, you can run reports on cost center basis. Those GLs will reflect as posted. So let's look at the enterprise structure design. Determining enterprise structure design in SAP is a fundamental process of any implementation project. Very, very important. Um, this can be seen in the business uh, uh, BPP, you know, and uh, very, very important. All the, the structure and all the requirements must be in the business process document. The design is mainly determined by the business scenario performed in the industry. Once the enterprise structure and SAP is defined by the process owner, it affects many things, such as how you perform the transaction and generate reports. Once the enterprise structure in SAP is defined by the process owner. So basically the functional team and all the team members within the SAP S1 space would have to sit down with the business look at what their legacy system was, and also discuss using SAP standards, what the enterprise structure design will look like. So the design would require how um, looking at processes like um, arrow to arrow, um, record to report, find, um, procure to pay, what are the activities within those processes, you know? And um, all that, like you have seen, will affect how transactions are posted, how they are reported, how they are analyzed, and so on. It requires great effort to change the enterprise structure in SAP. So we must ensure that the enterprise structure in SAP is designed in the implementation project. You know, that the, that design can accommodate all business scenarios, very, very important, and enterprise requirements for current and future situations. In simple terms, enterprise structure in SAP represents the organizational hierarchy of a business. And of course, that determines how processes flow within that structure. So I've been able to come up with um, a process flow for the configuration within finance and CEO. Um, so this is the enterprise structure um, within S4 HANA F5 space. The org structure for the company would, would, would look at different positions, but this is for configuration purpose or purposes. Um, this is not the whole structure, however, but this can actually give you an idea of what the structure looks like. And it has carried most of the very core elements. Of course, you have the enterprise structure, you have the client, now, some we have we have discussed a whole lot about the concept of clients. Please um, get the part three or two of this video of our training. Um, when transactions are configured, some are configured at client level and some are configured at company code level. Um, configurations that are done on client level 
are available for all company codes within that client. So what it means is that if I create, for example, um, general data in a master data or a GL, company in a company code called 001, another company code called 005 can actually see that information I've created. It could be financial statement, it could be field status variant, it could be, um, you know, um, posting periods. So any information that is created at client level can be accessed by other company codes within that client. So if my client is 400, every other company code created on that client would see information created at client level. You know, so we have chart of accounts, chart of depreciation, operating concern. Um, of course, chart of accounts, we have different types, you know, um, we have the operative chart of accounts, we have you know, the group chart of accounts and the rest. Um, chart of depreciation has to do with your fixed assets in, in SAP. Um, we'll look at that concept much later, but chart of depreciation is, um, carries all the things like depreciation method, depreciation areas and keys for that assets are used to run their depreciations. Uh, we have operating concern, which is highest hierarchy for, you know, the controlling area. Um, controlling area has to do with the management accounting side of SOP. And you have um, elements like your cost center, profit center, internal orders, you know, cost elements, you know, product costing within that space. On that company, of course, this can also be tied to the company code, but we're just trying to do it according to modules. Um, all these fit into the company code because the company code would have to generate a report for external use. We have the company, under the company code, we have things like segments, you know, credit control area, plans, business areas, functional areas. On that plant, you can have all oh, some other functionalities within the SD and MM space. Then also assigned to your company code and of course to the client is your fiscal year field status posting period. We're going to see all these terms when we get into the configuration. So this is just giving you an idea of how the process flows within SAPS for HANA configuration space. Okay, so let's look at some of these, um, what we call um, units or divisions. One is a company. We have discussed the concept of client, so please get the video for that. The company is the highest organizational high, um, structure in FI module. Yeah. So just as you can see, just under your client, you have company. The company is an original unit, which can be used to roll up financial statement for several company codes. So you can have more than one company code tied to a company. Company can assist one or more company codes. Right, very important for consolidation too. All company codes we need a company must use the same transaction chart of accounts, all right? And the same fiscal year breakdown. Very important. All company codes within a company must use the same chart of accounts. So chart of accounts is um, during configuration, you can, you have various types of chart of accounts, but when you're configuring your system, you can choose the chart of accounts that apply to your company code. Like what the system is saying now that all company codes within a company must use its requirements, must use the same chart of accounts and fiscal year status or breakdown. Company code currencies, on the other hand, can be different. So you can have, of course, for a company that is in UK and a company that is in Nigeria, they can have different currencies, you know, but they must, if they must be within the same company. The company code has one local currency in which transaction figures are recorded. So every company code has its specific currency according to your country, according to your business. Company is used in legal consolidation of all company codes assigned to it. So it's just a structure that has, you know, company codes in. So for example, you can have a company with, with various branches 
in different countries or in different states within a country. You can create all of them as company codes and they must, the, the, the very important requirement is that they must have the same chart of accounts and the same fiscal. Why? Because if you were to consolidate them, what does the system do basically? The, the chart of accounts merge. So during consolidation, there is a merging of various chart of accounts so that you can have one chart of accounts for a group, right? So that's why that requirement is very important. So um, functional consultant, before you go into configurations, you need to understand these basic um, terminologies um, so that when you're configuring, you understand where and why these things are happening. Uh, the next is what is company code? Now, company code is the smallest original unit in financial accounting model. So why this is the highest you know, original unit within the FI, company code is the smallest original unit within the financial accounting model for which a complete self-contained set of accounts can be drawn up for the purpose of external reporting. Of course, at company code level, because company codes are in various countries or in various states, they should be able to produce their own financial statements since they generate their own revenue, they generate their own expense, they have their own set of assets. So they should be able to generate their own external, um, their, their reports. And because they, they have regulatory bodies that you know, regularize their business or they have to, um, they, they have to remit to, they have to actually make sure that that report can be used for external purposes. It's important, it is the most important part of extra enterprise structure as assigned to most of the other modules for integration. The process of external reporting involves recording all relevant transactions and generating all supporting documents required for financial statement, that's balance sheet, profit and loss and of course your cash flow statement. So the process of external reporting involves recording all relevant transaction and generating all supporting documents that is required for financial statement reporting. So it's important that um, um, this is well understood because when you're creating a company, you have to create a company, you have a, you have a client, you have a company, and you have a company code. Then these are other units. The first is chart of accounts. <sighs> now, a chart of accounts is a variant created at the, at the client level in FI, which contains the structure and the basic information about the general ledgers. After its creation, we assign chart of accounts to company codes in SAP enterprise structure. So it's created at a client level, but it's assigned to come. Most of those elements we have are all assigned to the company code, but the essence of creating a client means that other company codes can actually um, view them. Information to be given in chart of accounts um, would involve the maintenance language. So at what language will the chart of account be reporting, the length of the GL number, manual automatic creation of cost centers, group chart of accounts, you know, and you know, this is a very important information that your, that the creation of your chart of accounts, not your ledgers now, but the chart of accounts would need to have. And there are three types of chart of accounts, which are maintained. One is the operating chart of accounts. Two is the country specific chart of accounts. And three is the chart, group chart of accounts. Of course, operating chart of accounts is your chart of account at your company code level that you use for your day-to-day -day operations. Country specific is basically used for reporting purposes for a specific country. So if a specific country has specific requirements about the particular requirement for reporting, the country specific chart of accounts will be used to meet that requirement. Group chart of accounts, of course, um, it helps in your consolidation of your chart of account for company, um, accompanying level. The next is operating concern. 
Operating concern is the main organization unit of profitability analysis known as COPA. So um, profitability analysis happens within the operating concern um, structure and that is assigned to the client. COPA acts as a management tool to analyze specific markets and business segments. This is a very important um, module within the FI space. Um, it's just an, extensible, uh, an extended feature to help you do um, in-depth analysis for business segments. So instead of reporting only at GL level, um, profitable analysis can go deeper into analysis using different um, parameters like if, if, it's, if it's a product-based business, production um, sales based on SKU, you know, different sales based on locations, you know, different parameters. So it's a very robust tool that can be used for um, markets and business segment analysis. The operating concern configuration is client independent. Once it's created in one client, we we'll automatically have an impact on other clients. So COPA holds the highest rank in SAP enterprise structure. Very, very, very um, important functionality. Now, the next is controlling area. This has to do with the CEO space. Controlling area is, is SAP's enterprise structure in the central organizational unit within the CEO module, management accounting module, and assigned to operating concern. So um, operating concern is at the top and assigned to clients while controlling area is assigned to operating concern. You need, it has to be assigned because um, the operating concern handles a lot of functionality like your cost centers, your profit centers, your segments, core, very important functionality for product, um, for determining product costing. And of course, um, profitability will need that requirement. So both, prof both profitability and controlling area are tied to operating concern. These original units in SAP Enterprise will represent a closed system used for cost accounting purposes. The controlling area may contain one or more company codes. Yeah, so you can have different company codes assigned to a controlling area, which can operate in different currencies if required. Company goals within the control area must have the same operational chart of accounts and fiscal event, just like the company code. Um, companies within the control area must have the same operating chart of accounts and the fiscal year for consolidation purposes. <laughs> the next is chart of depreciation. Remember, these are very important functionalities within the FICO organizational structure or enterprise structure. And you need to understand them because when you begin your configuration, um, you're going to be working on them. So it's important you understand what they are. It could help you understand your configuration process better. Next is the chart of depreciation. Remember, if you have questions, can the um, write us and, um, before the end of this session, you will get to see our contact details. Now, the next is um, chart of depreciation. The chart of depreciation is the highest level, um, highest level, of course, within the org structure in SAP asset accounting, which holds the entire asset accounting relevant settings, such as depreciation areas, depreciation methods that are specific to country. Now, the COD, it's a very, it's a core, it's the highest hierarchy within the asset accounting model. Like I said, um, chart of depreciation holds every relevant settings for you to be able to depreciate your assets at different depreciation levels and rates and different functionalities you know, using different currencies. And of course, applying um, the, the, the latest um, changes within the SAP S-Final Finance space. 
since the position, since different companies in the same country are subject to the same legal, since different companies in the same country are subject to the same legal regulations of fixed asset depreciation, chapter depreciation is usually country specific. Did you get that? Because I mean, if I have five branches within a country, the law applies to all the five branches when it when it has to do with depreciation. So depreciation is company country specific. And more than one company code can be assigned to a chart of depreciation. But of course, they have to use, they have to belong to the same country. That is the key with chart of depreciation. They have to, all the company codes must be in the same country. Each chart of depreciation also includes the tax book. And chart of depreciation, of course, that has um, the tax decisions for the assets where you need to do your configuration. Chart of vision is a three character code that supports alpha and rick format. It is generally companies, country specific. Normally the coding of chart of account will include country codes. So please take note, it's country specific. Okay, let's look at credit control area. The credit control area serves as the main hub where decisions on customer credits are made. Of course, we have the uh, some new functionalities as for HANA. Um, of course, CRM, um, customer relationship management. You know, we have um, a lot of new functionality that supports um, customers. You know. Okay, so it specifies and checks the limit for each individual customer for both accounts review and sales and distribution. So it has to do with things like the credit limits and um, supporting credit facilities for customers. Okay. Now the next is segments. Segments are divisions of a company that create value. Uh, depending on the accounting, um, the accounting policy you're using could be GAP, could be IFRS. You must be able to provide a balance sheet at the segment level. By identifying segments in SBFI, you can easily create the necessary financial statement for external reporting requirements. So yeah, it's, I mean, different companies can have different segments within a company. So each company must not be a company code. So let's say, for example, um, a company has five different in quotes, product serv or service delivery or production plants. Um, the idea is that you cannot see, for example, a company that is into production of paints. They might have a plant that does um, that that does the production of the paint itself. They might have a plant that does production of the buckets where the paints are in. They might have a plant that does, you know, the handle. So what this is trying to say is that you cannot recognize these various individual units as a company code. They have to be recognized as a segment. And because they are segments, they have the functionality of also providing their own financial statements, right? So segments are division of a company that creates revenue. So each of these segments, they incur costs, they generate um, revenue. So it's necessary to also manage them, man it's necessary to manage them such that they can produce their own financial statements for both internal and external reporting. Well, in most cases for internal reporting. Now, profit center. Why segments are used for external reporting most, in most cases, profit centers are internal units. So like we have said, um, the segments would focus, um, you can report those individual segments for external purposes for external could be, we, we, we could decide to want to sell some of those segments. We could have shareholders who are interested we could have um, regulatory authorities who want to know what is happening at that level. So those are standard requirements. But profit center is actually for internal units, 
internal reporting. They allow better controlling because you can follow the money in each unit and assign responsibility in accordance with the results. Profit centers are doing poorly, uh, of course, are, 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 are doing poorly, are easier to identify, and of course, um, support them to produce better. So what this is saying is that each unit can also be like a profit center instead of being a segment, and you can track the activities using the profit center functionality. Profit center also generate their own expense and, of course, produce their own income. But the essence is to um, monitor them like a department or segment, and any center that is not doing very well can easily be checked. Okay, so we have business areas, though not as popular as they were in the past. Business areas still play an important role in the internal identification of separate areas of responsibility. Um, more just like segment, business areas build out the balance sheet required for by external forces. Under the new GL, however, business areas and segments are considered so similar that no one can use, no one can be used in place for the other. So, um, of course, segments get the note. So, segment uh, looks a little bit more effective. So, I mean, they, they, they do the same, they have the same functionality. Functional area. Functional areas allow you to, so in configuration, you can decide to um, configure your segments and you know assign them to your transactions or configure them at business area level. Functional areas allow you to assign costs to specific areas within the business. Things like administrative, sales and professionals, and so on. From there, it's easy to create profits, profit and loss statements for each aspect of the business, allowing you to dig in and figure out where costs are bleeding and where you need to. So um, functional areas like um, um, like profit centers, functional areas are like cost um, tracking areas. Um, so um, you can use them to build cost. And um, of course, all these are linked to the GLs. So you can run reports based on a particular functional area and see the cost that has been accumulated, just like your um, segments or your you know, business areas, but this is cost driven anyway. The next is financial management area, FMA, are units that look at the business from a cash budget management and funds, manage, funds management perspective. So, um, of course, we have cash management as a new functionality within the SAP S1 and finance space. We have funds management also. These are very important functionalities that are newly introduced into the SAP S-400 system. Um, so these help you to manage things like liquidity, helps you to, to apportion funds to the right areas, basically help you to manage debts, you know, and um, things, bank-related um, um, issues. So we have credits, so rain, rain work, and tutorial point, and some of these um, very important sites. Okay, so let's look at um, configuring your enterprise structure in SAP. So we're going to go into the SAP system. Um, actually, to get your configuration, you can go to the menu part or you can use the transaction code SPRO. So I'm going to go into my SAP system, right? So like the guide here, I need to go to my menu part. So I go to tools, um, customizing, IMG. So you have SPRO, or I can come to the command bar and just type SPRO. So for all consultants, um, the beginning of your journey for configuration starts with, that's the most popular transaction code in SAP, SPRO for consultants. So 
Um, when you tap on FCR, it takes you to customizing where you do your projects, where you begin your configuration. It could be at the sandbox or it could be at the development client. You know, but remember, we have already logged into the development client, which is 400. And we need to go into the customizing area where we need to begin our configuration. So when you go to SPR, you click on SAP Reference IMG. Okay, so basically IMG means implementation guide and um, basically has, uh, um, contains documentation and activity text for your implementation project. So um, activity text, you can click on this little icon. So let's say we have gone into a configuration area. We have the icon here we call enterprise structure. So click on the drop down. If you want to see, if you want to get the text, the IMG text, click on this um, icon here with the folder and the glasses. So it will tell you, it will speak to you about what the enterprise structure is all about, right? Um, so you can see that um, uh, um, you will learn how to, in R3, uh, okay, so from there to your structure, um to help provide your company structure different accounting different accounting logistics and human resource on national units first analyze the structure and pr procedures in your company and then match them to sap structures there are there are various original elements defined as examples in the standard normally this would not cover all your needs extend the elements as required so you see that sap is also you know um educating us about what we have learned so far about the process um, about all the processes that you need to go through things like rise things like business process design um, of course like we have said that um, also in sap the beauty of sap is that when you want to configure you don't need to start from scratch depending on the industry sap has standard templates standard designs within the system so all you need to do is to copy some of those settings. So you have, so, I mean, it's easier for you to um, flow with your configuration. Then there are areas where um, standard, the standard SAP template would not meet your configuration needs. Like you could have copied the fiscal year period, but it's not what you want. You can change all that basically, all right? But it's good um, during our configurations, there are some elements we need to copy and there are some we need to create from new. And of course, there are some we need to also extend. During the clarification stage, work with the structure delivered by SAP. So it's an advice that during this clarification stage can be your, um, of course, your realized phase, you know, or your explore phase. Anytime you begin your configuration, um, you should use this structure delivered by SS in order to obtain a high degree of identification and acceptance from project members and other departments from the start. You may have to change some AP, SAP terminologies. That's what happened within the RISEF document and with the help of the business and the ABAP team. You should limit the number of persons authorized to maintain original elements. Define the authorization profiles accordingly as soon as the units are ready. Access should be locked so that no other changes are made. So this is advising us to uh, make sure that only authorized persons can, you know, have access to these configurations. And of course, the responsibility to do that is the basis team. So please, before your configuration, try to read you know, some information that would help you do your tax properly. So I've read that, so I'm good. I click on the drop down. Okay, I click on the drop down, just a second. Okay, so when you, so when you click the drop down, um, you're gonna see the content of the structure. Um, you have localized sample of national units. Under you have three key elements. 
uh, parts. You have your definition where you define your structure according to model. So you have finance, control, logistics, SD, plan maintenance, logistics, uh, logistics execution, human resource, and all within the enterprise structure. So our focus actually going to be on finance and controlling for this training, but more on finance. So that is for definition. If you go to assignments here, you will have to actually, you can read, mind you, you have to assign some of the definitions to some other elements. So assignment is extending some of your contributions to other, other elements. Then we have consistency checks, very important. Um, this is for SD. So when you are done, with, especially within the SD space, you can check for consistency. So let's, we're going to begin this session with the definition. Um, if you go to the session, that's where we are. Um, basically, um, as we go on, we're going to see some terminologies that we'll need to explain. So let's dive in and uh, continue. So in our definition, remember the structure, the structure starts with defining a company. I mean, we have logged into a client, we have a company. However, we can, um, okay, so sure, we can start with that or we can actually um, start at the company code level, but we're going to start with defining a company. So I'm going to click that. So you will see other companies here. You have new copy, you know, another functionality. Now, SAP has made it that you can copy settings from other companies or you can create your, your own. So I'm going to go to um, new entries. So you can see the requirements. So um, I'm going to make sure I note down what my company information is. So I'm just gonna have a four digit code. I'm going to have this company is going to be so let's say for example KK01. The company name can be Kelly. Kelly's um Company Limited. Okay. The streets, we can say, um, we don't have any streets, let's say KK, um, City, let me see someone London. Um, well, let's see Germany. Um, we can make, we can change all this information. Where we have um, more information. Okay. It's a GB. Mm. So um, you can just put G and um, it's going to drop down all the letters. Uh, okay, and I think we'll go with UK. So change this, so let me check. I think it's, uh, let me, you can click the drop down and look for the country. Okay, where are you? You can use any country for that matter. Um, um, I'm just in love with Germany. Uh, let me see. I don't think it's here. Should be here, DE, I guess. Let me check DE. Uh, of course, I think of, yeah, so. German code is DE, country key, EN, that's English. Now remember, 
if you don't remember, just click on this icon. It's going to drop down the list. Then you can find and select. As time goes on, you're going to be aware of the keys. Then the, the currency, very important. Um, let me see if, let me see. British pounds. Let me see if this would use. Uh, okay, let me use GPP. Okay. Then let's move on. So I'm going to click on save. Now, this takes us to what the customizing request now when you're configuring is important because i'm in the development system so it's going to generate a request like i said when you are migrating or transporting what you have configured to a, let's say the next client quality it will request for this request number because what you're configuring is inside the request number and also that request number has a short text which you can, which is editable, okay? So let's see what this is saying. What is a customizing request, basically? Customization request means any request submitted to servicenow.com um, development staff that the development staff seem, deems to require um, custom configuration for the system and the development staff agrees to perform on behalf of that customer. So basically what it's saying is that you want to do a new configuration in, within the development system and uh, um, that request will be accepted and when you need to transport, you need that request number to do your transport. So I want to change the description. So I click on new. So I'm going to change it to Kelly's company limited, the date and everything is there, the user is there, so I'm going to save. When it's here, you can see the customization request has changed because I've changed company, I'm going to say okay. So that is safe, that's how to save your um, development or your configuration in SAP. You can click save again just for, see it's telling you that I already saved. So you need to, uh, in the configuration, you need to really put your eyes on the status bar, you know, to get feedbacks on your actions. Then you have other drop downs that you can use if it's necessary. So I'll go, I'll go to exit. So I'm done with defining the company. The next is to define my company code. So let me just note that down. Okay, so I'm going to click edit, create, define, edit, copy, delete, or check company code. So I'm going to do that. Now, it is important that in creating your own company code, like we have been advised, you can use, you can copy settings from an existing company code. So you have to go to copy. So the option I want is within there. So I'm going to copy some settings from an existing company code, which would help me in my configuration. So I click this sign, which is called copy org. Of course, when I copy, it's going to move most of the organizational objects. So click on copy. Then where am I copying from? So I need to select the company code I'm copying from. Do that. Um, of course, I have to copy um, okay, you see now that the currency I'm copying here is euro. So pardon me to go back because um, I have to, that consistency has to be there. I use GBP. So I'm going to go back to define company. Um, you can go to position if you can't find it, but you can see it here, double click on it. So I'm going to change this to euro. Then I'm going to save it again. So that's the um, currency that I feel is comfortable for me based on the configuration. Now, so I'm going to go back go to edit copy. Now it's important that your company code currency, your company currency and your company code currency are actually the same. If not, you're going to have 
some feedback, some errors <clears throat> during in your configuration process. So I'm going to go to copy a bit, click on copy. So I want to copy a company within Germany. And of course, this is SAP standards. Uh, so the ones that are 001, 002, 003 are standard templates from SAP. You also have um, some other templates here. So I'm going to use, you have these templates, DE1, DE2. <coughs> I'm going to use 001. If I want to copy settings, sorry for that. Just a minute. <coughs> okay, so I'm going to copy settings from this existing company to my new company code, which is KK01. And I'll say, okay. Now, the couple of questions we might need to answer. Only copy GL accounts if you want to allocate the same chart of accounts to the target company as the source company code. Do you want to copy GL accounts from company code? Yeah. So we have the option of creating our GL from scratch, or we have the option of copying the GLs. Um, normally during your core configuration, you might need to create your own GLs because um, if you copy, it's going to come with a lot of GLs that are not yours. So um, it's, it's good you say no, so that you start from scratch to bring in GLs from the legacy system or from the requirements from the business. Right. Okay, so but if you have to, for training purposes, why not you can um, copy the GLs and create your own GL. So you still have the opportunity to create your own GLs and make those changes if you want to. But um, in real life scenarios, we might need to, um, might need to um, say no and begin the process of creating our own GLs from scratch. So, but for training purposes, for the, for the purpose of this, I'm going to copy. So I'm going to say yes. Continue area is assigned to, 001 is assigned to something code 001. Do you want to copy the assignments to controlling area? So what this is saying is that there's already an existing controlling area here and copying it means I'm going to use the same controlling area as this company is using. This is not compulsory, however. You can say no and you know use your own, of course, in real life situations, we would say no and define our own controlling areas. But for the sake of this training, I'm going to say yes um, in order for the system to copy settings from the existing controlling area. So we have number ranges. Number ranges are for every document that is posted in SAP, it comes with a number range, more like um, what you use to track those, um, those organizational objects, you know, so, and also this number range comes in intervals. So just as manually, you have invoice numbers that has different numbers. That's exactly what the number range does in SAP. So I'm going to say yes. Do you want to transport number ranges? It's fine. I mean, I could say no and start creating mine from scratch, but that would then um, be quite cumbersome. So I'm going to say yes. So, so basically, you know, when you're doing your configuration for a project, please copy the settings, but things like chart of accounts, things like uh, uh, controlling area, you can say no, but you can keep some other features like the number range. Um, and um, why not make changes to things like your fiscal year and some other basic information, you know. So I've... Um, the tables are actually copying now. So sometimes depending on the network, um, it's going to take some time. So let's just wait it out as we you know, move on. Um, next, we're going to go to see the global parameters that have been copied as a result of our changes that have been done. And uh, we call it a day for this part. All right, so um, that is done. So it has brought out a new customizing request. Now we have the opportunity of 
changing this description to something like um, copy company codes, um, settings. Or better still, still leave it um, on this request. So everything goes under this description. Um, in real life scenario, you might need to change it because it helps you to keep track of your activities so far. But we're going to be, so to do that, you can click on own request. I'm just going to show you that for now, but they are all going to be under the same request number. So I can go to um, create. I can change this to copy. Opening code data and save. So you see that the customizing request has changed and the description has changed. So I'm going to say, okay. So these are the steps. These are basically some of the processes you actually go through during your configuration. You can see that um, tables are being copied. We we'll would look at the concept of tables. Um, hopefully when we um, just after this session or in our or in our next session okay so this is done just click on okay okay so it's fine of course it didn't include some certain automatic recordings so okay you want to transport the intervals yes so it's okay, it's fine. So yes, again. So this would take um, a lot of time. So um, just keep saying, please, please, depending on the system you're using, um, a yes is fine, but you see it's copying, there must be done manually for number range this for SM56. So these are just functionalities that are copying. It's supposed to run this manually or um, automatically, but um, the system I'm using will require me to do this. So it's done. So go to the next one. So these are number ranges from different um, apps. So let me see, I'm just going to keep doing this. Okay, so um, like I said, it's not supposed to take that long. So it depends on the system you're using. Company code 001, copy to KK01. So the copy has been done and some object has been copied. So the selected objects, if I go, if you go to complete that activity, you can see company code 001 copied to K0, KK01. So that's fine. So I'm going to go back. And um, the next thing I will do is to, uh, of course, I've made, I've copied from a different company code. So I need to check certain information to make sure they reflected in mine or uh, some editing I need to do in my own company code. So edit company code data, um, go to position. If your list is long and you have the option position is used to search. So it's easier than you know, drilling down. So this, you see my company name has been copied so from the old one. So I'm going to change this to Kelly's. And then the meter, city world of DE currency, DE language, and it changes to EN, just English, English. Um, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to look at the address. So I've copied address, so no address was copied. So it's a company. So I'm going to say Kelly's. Search term KKL. Street number PC23. Code you can use five digits number. And we can say KK. Country DE, you can look for a region within the country. Okay, so click the drop down. And uh, okay, I, I think I love, uh, I know a club called Wada Bremen. Uh, I think I'm going to use Berlin. 
going. That's 11. Let's go down, see if there are any relevant information, phone number. You can use this phone number. So I'm fine. If you have, you can impute. So it's good. So um, that's fine. So I'm going to click on save. I'm done with my editing. And then I'm going to say, okay, so um, let me see if I would take this back to the previous request. So you can see my request. So I want it to be under this. You see the different request numbers. So this is Kelly's company. This is other requests I have. You can see the request. You can see the client. So inside of those requests, you have customizing tasks. Inside of customizing tasks, you have I am. Inside this, you have you maintenance. And inside this, you have this, and this. These are tables. Then you have, this is my company code. So I want it to go here. Sorry, here. So double click. So it's come back and I say, okay. So during transport, like I've said, you need those requests. So I'm going to go back and go back. I'm done with this activity and go back and close. So you can see that um, for this session, we're going to end here. We have all our organizational objects like the business area, functional area. We're going to see how in the next video or the part five, we're going to see how to do these configurations. However, um, before we go, um, very briefly, we need to check um, the settings we have done. So immediately after copying, of course, um, there are some parameters that have been copied. We call them the global parameters. So you can use the transaction code OBY6 to check. And if you're on a screen and you want to open a new screen, you can put a slash N and you put the code. But I remember the part, so we can just remember to close this, go to financial accounting, go to financial accounting, global settings, go to global parameters, and you see enter global parameters. Okay, so of course, let's see global parameters for a company code. Global parameters, company code, global parameters control how a company code behaves in the SAP S400 system. Okay, in global parameter settings, you can make you can make various global specification configurations for the company code. So this is done at company code level. Global parameter is SAP enables to link the company code to chart of account, fiscal year, and other 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 requirements. So let's see how that happens. So I'm going to find my company code KK01. Remember. Um, the code should have also been discussed with the client. This is my company, so I'm going to double click on it. So you see, because I copied from an existing company, it has copied the chart of accounts used by that company. It has copied the fiscal year variant. It has copied the, um, the um, credit control area, but we have not done assignment. So the company, this is just a company code that remember this company code is supposed to be tied to a company. I remember we have seen our client. If you go back to this chart, which is what we are, you can see the client, you can see the company, you can see the company code. You can see field, fiscal year status, field status uh, posting. Um, you can see all those functionalities, what you call them accounting organization and processing parameters. So you can see fiscal year variant, posting period variant, all these activities that you see here were copied from the setting from the previous company code. However, we have the opportunity to make these changes if we wish and um, define some new ones. But, so this is just showing you the effects in the global um, settings. In the next video, we're going to look at the tables. You know, um, basically when you do this copying, you we saw that they were copying into various tables and to assess your tables in SAP, um, you use XE16. And tables are, are basically where your transactions are posted to. 
um, of course, in SAPS for HANA, um, we'll look deeper into the changes. But um, from ECC, if you're coming from ECC, um, basically um, some of the tables like the index tables, um, the copies data information from you know base tables have been relegated. The aggregate tables that gets data from the index tables has also been um, you know relegated. In SAPS for HANA now we have two main tables that are in line with the simplification and the compatibility views of SAPS for HANA system. Um, these are the native HANA capabilities that are used to simplify you know, data within the SP, SAPS for HANA space. Now, these tables initially um, were, were very um, heavy um, analytics and transaction data was difficult. So, I mean, with these tables, when you perform transactional data, you need to move to another table to do your analysis. You know, but the simplification and comparable views of SAPS 400 has relegated some of these tables. So we just have two main tables here. We have the BKPF table, which stores um, header information from your documents. And we have the AC DOCA table, which we call the universal journal, which stores line item data from all components and modules in SAP. Of course, um, this means that it basically it's, it's the simplified recording <clears throat> of all business transactions. And um, whether you're in um, analytical, um, whether you're trying to do analytical processes or you're trying to do um, online, you know, processing of transactions, you know, all, all this happens real time. Everything else is being calculated on the fly. And we have um, algorithms that are used to, to make sense out of data uh, using AI, machine learning, big data, you know, data analytics functionality within the SAP S4 HANA um, finance has really turned the, the, the software around. If you had experienced ECC, you would have indeed seen the change. Um, there were lots and lots of tables, but now we just have to focus on this very, um, and the most important of them of course, is the AC, AC Docker table that keeps all the line items. Of course, index tables um, and uh, um, aggregate tables, of course, tables like your Fagoflex T for new, of course, GL line items, Fagoflex T, total table, KNC1, LFC1, and all those, those tables have all been relegated. And uh, Right now in the S4 HANA space, SC Doka, which gives you um, the Universal Journal, is, 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 which is used by the Universal Journal, um, is actually um, the main table within the SAP S4 HANA database. Now, of course, um, the concept of the Universal Journal um, within the SAP S4 HANA database, it, 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 that, you know, trying, Retiring all these index and aggregate tables has given us the functionality or the, the possibility of hang, having a single source of truth within the SAPS for analysis. Since the AC Doka, um, which is the line and table, has given us that platform to both do analytical processing and transaction processing, and everything happens on the fly, real time. You know, so that is a major boost and a major plus to the functionality of the SAP S4 HANA system. So we're going to look at, you know, go probably um, display some of these tables in our next class and look at some other structures, which we are just done the company code. So we're going to look at some other um, organizational structures that are also important and look at some configurations that are important to our configuration. Wow. I believe you have learned um, something today. Um, we have been able to discuss about the org structure. We have looked at um, a real life configuration. We've talked about, you know, in previous sessions about the business process, important documentation. So at this point, um, we are looking at the business process document. Um, we are getting information from requirements gathering, 
um, at this point we are trying to um, we are trying to realize configuration. Um, so we are we we're, we're, we're creating and configuring based on the blueprint. Um, so the blueprint is like a Bible. It's like the God. It's like the Quran. Um, basically, um, it helps us to actually follow what has been said. It's like a guide. Just as these are the guides to our spiritual life, the blueprint is like a guide to your configuration process. So for every activity you you perform in configuration, it has to be within the blueprint space. You have to always reference the blueprint in carrying out your activities. So thank you once again for watching um, this. Please kindly share and like on all social media platforms. You can reach me on my email and you know WhatsApp me on my number. And um, <clears throat> so today we are going to look at the part four of the SAPS for HANA finance configuration. And we focused on the enterprise structure. In the next part, we're going to look at some other organizational elements that are necessary for our configuration. And of course, we're going to do some assignments um, of those um, data we have created. Thank you very much for your time. And don't, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and um, to share this information so that every other person can learn. Have a nice day. Thank you and stay safe.